Instead, she took me to meet a woman who now obtained contraceptives from the clinic. Dr. Junis is walking me through the area where she works in. Um, 100,000 people live in 97 hectares of land in very squalid conditions. Until recently, groups like Dr. Melgaz received aid from the U.S. government. The influence of the Christian right in Washington means that funding is now ending. She's here. Okay, so. Go. Dr. Melgar's patient agreed to let us film. Hello. Is this the rest of your house? Remy told me that her husband was out looking for work. They were so poor that they had already given away two of their children to relatives. She and her remaining three children had not eaten that day. Remy has had two attempts at abortion where she tried to induce the abortion by massaging her own abdomen. That didn't work, so she gave birth each time to a son. The third time around, when she was four months pregnant, she took bitter herbs, threw herself out of a window. When that didn't work, she continued to massage her abdomen. And one day, she felt her water break and blood come flowing down. She blacked out because of the pain. <laughs> She bitterly wished she had had access to contraceptives earlier in life. In the eyes of the church, she's committed a crime, a mortal sin, by killing her own flesh and blood. But she says she couldn't afford to have this child. She already had two children who she couldn't afford to feed. To bring a third child into this world would have been a crime in itself because she wouldn't have been able to sustain this child. <laughs> She felt the fact that she survived the abortion showed that God had forgiven her. Dr. Melga said that faced with stories like Remy's, she had no option but to give advice on abortions, despite what the law said. Eventually, we give them uh, information about the safe abortion. We, we also warn them against unsafe practices that could kill them. But you, but you know of service providers, safe service providers, who would look after these poor women and give them a proper abortion? Yes. Uh, I think most uh, women's NGOs would have uh, contact. I think if you really are pro-women, you would have contact to these uh, services that are underground. 40% of Filipinos live in desperate poverty. The larger the family, the more likely it is to be poor. This is the top of the dump. This is a garbage dump? Yes. Huh? We've been trying for days now to find a helot, a traditional midwife who provides induced abortions to poor women. Um, but they're scared to speak with us because they don't want their identities to be revealed. They're scared of the authorities. And also because they move around a lot, they don't want their locations to be found. We finally found a helot who's agreed to speak with us to show us what she does. But we have to conceal her identity. In Manila, there are hundreds of these helots. They charge seven pounds a session. The helots try to locate the fetus inside the womb. She says it's like a chicken's egg, and as soon as she feels it, okay, she turns it, puts her hand inside and pulls it out. The water breaks and blood comes gushing out. And most women, of course, scream in pain because it is a very, very painful procedure. Sometimes it takes three or four sessions to abort the fetus. Hindi mo na, hindi, hindi kasalanan sa, sa juice na 
tutulong ka kung... Despite being a devout Catholic, she considers what she's doing to be correct. She says it's also part of her religion to help those who are in pain, to help the poor, to help those who suffer. Most of her patients accept they will end up in hospital. As a woman, I can't even imagine the pain that some of these women who are getting these induced abortions have to go through. They don't get any anesthetic. Um, there's no medicines to ease their pain. And uh, it's really a brutal form of getting an abortion. But these women are desperate. For women who can scrape together 60 pounds, there is another option. I've just gotten off the phone with one of our contacts. There's an illegal abortion about to take place and we have the address. We were told to hide our camera and park far away from the secret clinic. Carrying out an abortion and having one can result in a lengthy jail term. This is a tiny little two-bedroom apartment in a nondescript building in a middle-class neighborhood. Nobody could ever guess that there's an abortion clinic here. We'd been warned that the abortion would be very distressing. Inside, there was a terrified 17-year-old. This young woman has a three-month-old baby, and she's already eight weeks pregnant, so she's opted for an abortion. She's obviously very nervous. She told us she wanted people to see what Filipino women had to endure. She says she didn't have any other choice. She already has one child and she can barely afford to feed that child. How did your parents react when you told them that you wanted to get an abortion? It turned out that an underground support group had paid for the procedure. This young woman's father doesn't want her to have an abortion. Her mother has agreed, and that's why she's at this facility. Um, when she goes back home, she's just going to tell her father that she wasn't pregnant. That was a false uh, pregnancy alarm. The woman preparing to carry out the procedure was medically unqualified. She picked up the technique working with a doctor who carried out illegal abortions. Despite her lack of qualifications, she also administered anesthetic. The abortion began. The abortionist and her assistant had only the most basic equipment. They told me that it was too dangerous for them to carry out an abortion on a woman who was more than eight weeks pregnant. 